working. You're going to do a test on boys? I have really done this. Beep, 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 Very kind of you to come. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, I'd like to ask you, do you enjoy working in Hong Kong? The actual formula that made R2D2 work has never really been totally discovered. Mm -hmm. And by the way, quite a few professors have tried. Mm -hmm. No, seriously, it's a serious subject. Um, especially the tones it makes, the way it moves, the way it disagrees with the other robot. Um, all those things made people feel a little bit sorry for him. But he's also a hero, because he also saves the universe and the galaxy and all kinds of other things around. Mm. So it's difficult to pinpoint why. Uh, normally you have a robot with big eyes, and that works quite well. But there's been other good robots around which have never caught on in the same way as R2 has. So if I really did know what the secret, you can guarantee I wouldn't tell you. Mm. It's actually on my website. There's a picture of R2 at the background. Uh, that one in the front, and it says, you are my, I am your father. So if R2 says it, I have to believe him. He wouldn't lie to, he would not lie to me. He would not lie to me. <laughs> so if he says it's the father, he's the father. It's a cool one. I like the company. Um, talk to them. Uh, I think it's a... Out of all the robots I would imagine they would try to update on, it's a very, very good example. And I think the people that made it, you know, should be saluted. I think it's a cute little robot. Um, of course, it's not as cute as R2-D2, of course. But uh, I think it'll catch on. It fits in to the modern ideas of sleek and cool and fast. So, yeah, I love it. You've got the signs of how people love them and why they love them. And you've also got a history of robotics. When it comes to other countries, it depends on the culture. So the answer really is, it can be branded. Robots can be branded with, with products, can be branded to a product itself. But it has to be done within scope of understanding that particular culture. Mm -hmm. That would be my answer there. What scientists are doing now is they're actually wanting to make a robot or computer that actually can be understood and communicate and not have to be wildly intelligent. And they've found they can do it much, much easier than they ever thought before. We can, in science, we can do a lot of things before it actually gets out to the public, scientifically. I mean, I'll give you an example. I used to work at a research establishment in the UK. We're going back to the 1970s. At that time, we had flat televisions on the wall. Flat televisions. Mm -hmm. They didn't come out to the public for another 30 years. Mm -hmm. So what we have behind the scenes and what the public are actually given as a product are two totally different things. So we do have robots that can actually do everything you were saying, the servicing, talking, selling a product, finding out what the client wants. But will it be acceptable to the public? Or will they just turn around and say they want a human to do it for them? So until the time is right, maybe the science is there, but the people aren't. And so people have to be careful. We are scared of machines that appear to be humanoid. Some societies can accept humanoids, but mostly in the West they don't. That's the division. So I found in China, I found in Japan, they can have humanoids and it doesn't frighten them at all. But I found in the West, it frightens them. I have no idea. It might be a culture um, diversity because they've been brought up in the East to actually understand robots and they even give spirit names to machines in factories. Yeah. Right? Because they believe they have their own essence in some belief. So if they have their own essence, why would they be scared of a humanoid robot if it has its own essence? So as long as you respect it, then it will respect you back. It's a totally different idea that we have in the West. So it's a cultural thing, uh, which is you know, quite deep and probably in the DNA. Mm. Look at the other way. Um, if you actually have a salesperson, which is a robot, they're already programmed to sell products for their client, right? If we well, basically it would be to a certain extent, even no matter how intelligent you made them. They're not gonna go, don't have this, it's too expensive, go around the corner. If you're dealing with a human, at least you can look in their eyes to see if they're lying or not, to a certain extent, right? So I think people would feel safer uh, buying certain things. Now, on the other hand, if the robot could give them fast service and they can get in there and get out relatively fast, then fine. 
which of course is why the internet sells so many things. Because they don't have a salesman getting in the way. All they have to do is to wait for the damn product to come. And I never was very excited about advertisers or marketing in the past when I was younger. I've changed my mind quite considerably. I've changed my mind, I'll tell you why. Because there's so many great things out there that you just don't know about if it's not advertised. So now I look at advertising more as an informational uh, hub than anything else. You know, I want them to get to me. I want them to find me. I want them to come to where my watering hole is, as they say in advertising. Uh, and then they'll tell me about things like, yeah, I want that. That will do that job. I mean, recently I think I found uh, three or four products which I would love to have in my mind, and then suddenly I found they actually existed. I think I would like to be advertised to through uh, a virtual robot, to be honest. Because the virtual robots are very exciting. Uh, and if I had my own personal aide or assistant, who was a virtual robot, I could then say to my personal assistant, go and find things to do with blah, 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 blah. And that assistant would come back to me. And that's the system which would sell to me. So I'd use my virtual robot assistant as a filter for the advertising. But I would want my assistant to be informed of things that I'm interested in. And if it's with me all my life, it will know what I'm interested in. Wouldn't it? So that's why I believe in robot assistants, but virtual robot assistants. If I go to, let's say, Amazon, uh, and I'm looking, excuse me, at a product. If I go somewhere else like Facebook, that product pops up. Yeah. Now that's smart. I don't find that scary. I don't find it scary because it's specifically just reminding me. It's easy to forget you were looking at something and you, you know, just go on to something else. Um, what I don't like, of course, is too many windows and advertising coming up where they push it on you. I mean, nobody wants that kind of crap. And it's not good for the company they're advertising either. I mean, I was with a company that were doing that kind of advertising and the company was very legit and a good company. But you know, I didn't want to go with them. Because it already built a bad reputation with me because it kept bringing up bloody windows every time I went somewhere. You know, popping up, popping up, popping up, popping up. And I was hating them. But I knew and found out later on they were actually a good company. So it wasn't doing the company any good at all. Ha 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 